Give me all your money. Really? Can I at least have a 3090? Come on! We're gonna apologize in advance for wasting your time and ours with this one. We'll get to the point as fast as possible here. We did a full suite of thermals, power, acoustics. We did flatness testing, surface pressure testing, everything. Spent like a day uh, on just the accessory testing alone for the 3080 Ti, not even counting the games. And, you know, at the end of it, ultimately, we just grew increasingly frustrated with NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Ti, which is launching tomorrow from date of review going up, but review embargo lifts today. So we're here to review it and tell you why we became increasingly frustrated with it. It's a number of reasons, one of which is the price. $1,200. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair and their 5000D Airflow. The Corsair 5000D Airflow is an ATX tower with high material build quality and a focus on cooling performance, with attention paid to small details. The case has a unique look with deeply indented cooling pathways on the sides of the front and top panels and has carefully matched colors across the case, available in both white and black. Learn more at the link in the description below. So ultimately, with NVIDIA saying $1,200 and arguing with us uh, separately that it is okay, $1,200, because it's better than, quote, better than AMD's 6900 XT, which is $1,000, uh, two things. One, no, it's not, not always. Some scenarios, yes, certainly, but not all of them. Two, we didn't recommend the 6900 XT at $1,000 either. We also thought that was a waste of money, just like the 3090. This was way back when we were all much more naive, but it was the 3080 and the 6800 XT. They looked great for the money compared to a 6900 XT or a 3090. That was before the, the GPU shortage was really as well documented and known as it is now, or at least shortage versus the insane demand. So we're gonna save you all the time here. We decided to cut this review down to the base components to prove our point which is that this card is not worth the time or the money. In fact, it is so not worth the time or the money that I didn't even bother to disconnect it from the test bench to put it on the table for this shoot. In gaming, the 3080 Ti versus the 3080 is anywhere from 2.3% to max about 13% better than the 3080 non-Ti. And everything else kind of scales from there based on what you're looking at. We retested the 3080 non-TI for this review specifically, slight move in numbers upwards as the drivers have advanced and things like that. So that's fresh data, uh, but ultimately the average was closer to maybe eight, depending. So the, the tens were rare and it was mostly in 4K, high resolution scenarios, high load. The 3090, it doesn't even matter. It's just not relevant. It's not something you should be buying for gaming. It's a card maybe for artists, for game developers, people who can work in Unreal Engine or something make use of that VRAM, but it, it just doesn't make sense to really run it as a comparison for games. We didn't recommend it for gaming when it came out, and there was a reason for that. So the 3080 Ti, when it was announced in NVIDIA's keynote, which at least it wasn't Intel's, but it, it was boring. When it was announced, NVIDIA shocked everybody by announcing it at $1,200, which is $200 higher than expectations were before launch. And from what we understand, speaking with a couple of people, it sounds like that price was up in the air for a little bit prior to launch, but the extra $200 gets tacked on at the end because Nvidia knows that it can make it. And Nvidia is pulling like a, a GameStop secondhand seller here at this point where Nvidia knows it's, it's gonna get sold for a lot of money by someone else anyway secondhand, so it should be the middleman itself. It should middleman its own product at a higher price and collect on some of that uh, cash that any other market would not allow. This product, the 3080 Ti, would be DOA in any other market condition than right now. That's where it is. So this is an egregious money grab. It is highway robbery, and that's the current GPU market. The offensive thing, though, is that it's coming from NVIDIA, the first party, which has apparently lied through its teeth about how much it wants to support gamers for the last six months now. NVIDIA is taking advantage of the current market it probably regrets ever launching the 3080 at $700 for technical MSRP. Uh, and the 3080 Ti, simply put, is just is not worth $1,200.
period. You don't need the rest of the review. We have some numbers in here to kind of back it up, but the real problem is the, the percent difference in price versus the percent difference in gaming performance because that's where it's targeted. So 12 gigabytes of memory, that's the change. It's a cut down 3090 die in a sense where you're, you're running slimmer cores and SMs, but you've got half the memory of 3090, two gigabytes more than a 3080. That's not gonna make a difference in anything, the extra two gigabytes. The extra 12 gigabytes in the 3090 will. That'll matter for things like 3D art, but the 3080 Ti it can't really fill that gap. It can't be a 3090 alternative. So that makes it useless as a 3090 alternative, and it makes it overpriced as a 3080 alternative. And the pricing, if you do the simple numbers on it, MSRP to MSRP, because that's all we can base this on. It's about NVIDIA after all, not the secondhand market. MSRP to MSRP, it's 71% more money for a 3080 Ti than a 3080. And it's less than 10% more performance. That's insane. It's, it's so insane that somebody should check on NVIDIA and make sure everyone's okay there, that there's not some sort of noxious gas leak in the building that's making them think that this price point makes any sense whatsoever. NVIDIA right now, this, this is NVIDIA right now. It's just some money printer over there. Just get all, all the money out of the architecture that you can. That's NVIDIA. Let's get into some of the benchmarks. We're gonna keep it really simple today and go through the numbers. And it's uh, movie prop money, by the way, before anyone gets the wrong idea. Frequency validation helps us understand how a card is performing and understand its performance better. The 3080 Ti, the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti FE starts at around 1970 megahertz, then immediately drops to about 1920, then 1905 megahertz, and eventually it settles at about 1890 megahertz. This is normal, it's because of how NVIDIA's boost follows a temperature gradient. So as the temperature decreases, the frequency increases and vice versa. In our original frequency test of the RTX 3080 FE back at its initial launch, we plotted this line with the 3080 FE at around 1935 megahertz average. In the time since, there have been changes to boosting behavior to ensure that some cards don't crash if they're boosting too high. These numbers will move around a little bit based on which model you're working with and the silicon quality itself. So even another FE would plot a little differently from this one. Fan behavior looks like this. As the GPU ramps to about 74 degrees core, and we'll look at memory momentarily for temperature, we see the fan has a delayed start of about 10 seconds after the load begins. The fan ends up in the range of about 1970 to 2020 RPM, average combined. Overall, hysteresis looks fine on this, and fan ramp looks standard. We don't get any high-pitched whining annoyances until overclocking, or unless dealing with super high FPS, where coil wine kicks in. More on the overclocking stuff later. Rainbow Six Siege is up now at 4K. The RTX 3080 Ti pushed 201 FPS average, effectively the same as the RTX 3090. The performance landed it ahead of the RTX 3080 Eagle and the retest by about 8%. So, wow, cool. That's worth $400. That's almost 2% per $100 here. The RX 6900 XT remains disadvantaged at the higher resolutions running at a peasantly 168 FPS average. At 1440p, the RTX 3080 Ti pushed 350 FPS average, allowing the RTX 3090 a lead of about 2.5%. The 3080 Eagle is led by the Ti by about 5%, mathing out to about $100 for every one percentage point improvement at MSRP for both. It probably has good value if you scalp it, if you want to start a side business, but for actual use, we'd buy one of the other ones. At 1080p, the RTX 3080 Ti held 450 FPS average, outdoing the 3080 Eagle by about 2.3%. The 6900 XT holds a slight lead, but they're basically the same. Nvidia's argument about being better than the 6900 XT was poorly reinforced to begin with, but also not universally true. It's not actually the opposite of true here. We talk about this more, but at this point we've run out of dead horses to flog, so we're moving on to the next game. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, the RTX 3080 Ti ran 104 FPS average, with lows overall fine and expected. Nothing's really wrong here, other than the price hint, which makes it all the more boring. The 3080 Ti led the 3080 Eagle retest by 6.4%. The 6900 XT ran at about 98 FPS average, so roughly the same as the 3080, and the 6800 XT isn't far behind. The worst part of all of this is that the 3080 Ti looks even worse as you drop down another run in the stack. 
instead of comparing to the $1,000 6900XT, which is definitely what NVIDIA wants, or the $1,500 3090, neither of which we recommended, by the way, the comparisons should really be to the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT, which we actually recommended for gaming. The 3090 needs another retest on our charts, technically speaking, but would gain maximally a couple percent here versus its current positioning with the older numbers. You'll forgive us for not freshly retesting something no one should be buying purely for gaming anyway, considering we'll be invariably only getting comments about how there's no supply of them to begin with. At 1440p, the TIE Fighter <laughs> landed at 169 FPS average, which is 3% ahead of the RX 6800 XT, the latter of which remains technically better with lows. The 3080 allows the TI a lead of 3.9%, which is approximately $102.56 for every 1% increase. Not that we are counting. It's like reviewing a Titan class card, except moving on. At 1080p, the 3080 Ti and the RTX 3080 are the same. They're both bound by the CPU, a limit which AMD can overcome due to driver level differences, but otherwise these are all pretty close to each other. In Total War Three Kingdoms at 4K, the 3080 Ti ran at 50 FPS average. This shows the limitations of performance in this heavier workload. Our Total War Three Kingdoms benchmark with the ultra settings we apply is it's a future looking benchmark because it's one of the most challenging for any of these cards to run. The 3090 is allowed a lead of about 2% here versus the 52 on the 3080 Ti and the 3080 Ti leads the 3080 by 12 to 13%. This is the biggest gain that we'll look at in today's testing and it's at the outer edge of what we saw. At 1440p, the RTX 3080 Ti held 103 FPS average with our ultra settings led by the 3090 by about 4%, or leading the 3080 Eagle and the 6900 XT by about 9.6%. That's a rare occurrence with these two, and this is one of the only scenarios in which we were able to find such a difference. 1080p is still hard for these cards given the ultra settings of Total War. The 3080 Ti sits in its firmly established position, right between the 3090, the 6900 XT, and the 3080. The lead over the 3080 has diminished here to 6.8%, with the 6900 XT encroaching, but still running superior in its 1% and 0.1% lows for frame time consistency. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K, the 3080 Ti held about 95 FPS average, leading the 3080 Eagle by about 9% here. The 6800 XT and 6900 XT run at 75 to 84 FPS average in this one, so we've got a similar pattern to Total War for at least this resolution. At 1440p, the RTX 3080 Ti ran at 138 FPS average, reducing its lead over the 3080 non-Ti to 6.5%. That'll descend as resolution falls in most cases. The 6800 XT holds at 125 FPS average, encroaching on but not surpassing the normal 3080 non-Ti. The 6900 XT leads here, so Nvidia isn't always better than the $1,000 part, despite a 20% hike in price. And also, to be clear, we don't recommend the 6900 XT either. 1080p establishes the 3080 Ti at 165 FPS average, allowing the 6900 XT a lead at a significant price drop. The 6800 XT is led by the 3080 Ti by about 6% here, with the 3080 not far behind. This chart shows the noise levels in our standardized testing measured at a 20 inch distance and every 5% stepping in RPM. The hard RPM number is listed at the bottom and you'll also see a white star at 41.5 dBA, which indicates where the card ran when left auto-controlled for its fan speed and temperature in a constant load. NVIDIA auto sets fans to match the RPM between fan one and fan two, so auto under full load in a 21C environment established on our card, roughly a 2030 RPM speed for each. That's 55% for one, 59% for the other. That'll change per card due to manufacturing variance in the fans, uh, and the PWM on them, but the card ramps as expected and it follows a standard fan noise curve for GPU coolers. Power testing is up now, tested at the card for board level power consumption. We're not measuring at the wall, so you can use this as a rough gauge to get an idea for how big of a power supply you'll need if you do happen to buy one of these cards for $1,200. The 3080 Ti FTI stock card pulled 363 watts in Furmark and in gaming, although that's not shown here, it's the same. The original 3080 pulled 322 watts here, so we're at an increase of about 13% more power from the 3080 for the 3080 Ti, with the 3090 pulling actually a little bit below the 3080 Ti stock card. Both of these cards have the same TDP, 
So we're roughly in the right range. Compared to the 6900 XT, the 3080 Ti stock card pulls 20% more power, which makes it a lot less efficient. Overclocking the 3080 Ti pushed it to an expected 413 watts. So that's for the benchmarks. Now, we mentioned a few things in here that didn't get charged. Overclocking. Our car, there's like something screwy with the drivers or the card because when we try to do a power offset, 100% uh, is baseline. It goes up to 114% for power offset. That any amount of power offset, our card starts boosting too high and it black screens, flickers, and loses display out. That's a problem that happened when Nvidia launched the 3080s. We didn't understand what that problem was at the time though. And so when we heard about it, when we eventually encountered it, we, we didn't really know how to describe what was going on. And so it looked like a driver issue. And drivers can fix that issue. But at the end of the day, the 3080 Ti was boosting too high. That's going to inflate the numbers. Uh, it was stable stock in our test bench. We suspect, given that a simple power offset gets it to a point without overclocking, just over power, gets it to a point where it's flickering and dropping display, we suspect that there might be cards out there, stock, that could encounter the same issue if it's a better GPU core or something uh, in some aspects, maybe worse than others. So anyway, overclocking didn't work on ours. It, this, it's the, this is the first time I've ever seen something quite this strange where it would apply the settings, I could stability test it, we could get numbers out of it that scaled, but then you look at the screen and it's flickering black every maybe couple times uh, every 30 seconds. So not usable. That's why overclocking is on the charts. We've got footage of it too, but end of the day, it's busted. And that's something's, something that NVIDIA is wrong. The, they can try and say you got a bad one all they want, but if NVIDIA, it's like you know, either you're incompetent for not testing the card at all, because I know they get tested at the factory. We've been to the factories. 100% of the cards from board partners get tested before they ship. Either it's not getting tested at all, which is incompetent, or they're pushing it too hard, and they're saying it's not getting tested, and uh, I guess that's also, there's, there's a problem. Maybe not incompetence, it might just be a mistake where they rushed it. But either way, we had issues with it, and uh, that's all we can say about that. Memory thermals, 90 to 100 degrees Celsius in our benchmarks, depending on which module we were looking at, what benchmark we were testing. We don't need charts for this. It's all you need to know. 90 to 100 C, uh, not a good spot to be thermally for a card that's $1,200, NVIDIA. Get real. 80 degrees for the memory backside. So that's on the other side of the PCB flip chip module. It puts it a little closer to the PCB than to the top of the uh, memory chip packaging. But on the opposite side, you're going to get some heat soak and spread. And so the number is always going to be lower. It's typically about 10 degrees Celsius in previous testing. So 80 lines up with the 90C memory for the other ones. And uh, that's about it. That's it for this card. So don't buy the 3080 Ti. Uh, it's, it's a waste of silicon that could have been something else. And uh, it's, it's not bad in an objective sense. But it's a terrible price, and it's offensive that NVIDIA would try to sell this for this money. So, whatever. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. I will say we had fun in NVIDIA's live stream. I had fun trolling the live stream. Uh, we got chat to say F a lot. So, that was fun. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Stop us directly. And we'll see you all next time.